Hey, it's Aaron from GameWithDudes.com, and this time I'm checking out Dice Kingdoms of Valeria. Dice Kingdoms of Valeria is a roll and write designed by Levi Moat, and is being published by Daily Magic Games. It is one to four players, and it is a sort of a, a bounce around roll and write where you're going to be going down one track and unlock something for another and moving all around and all those exciting things. Well, they're, they're often exciting to me. Let me give you an overview of how the rules are, some of the mechanics and things, and then show you what a couple of turns might look like. So I showed you the prototype box, but more importantly, you need to actually see what the sheets look like. And I'll have some images for the, uh, the die in just a second. So just sort of explain how the game works. I know when you first look at something like this, I don't, I mean, maybe I'm projecting, but I kind of look at it like, wow, there's a lot of things. Let me try to systematically figure out what all of this is and how they relate to each other. There's four sheets total, uh, two are summer and two are winter. I think it's summer. I hope it's summer. And you have a castle sheet, which is this one on the left, and you have a map sheet, which is this one on the right. You also have various areas. So I know there's kind of a lot going on here, but I'll do my best to describe it all. I've spent a lot more time describing it in excruciating detail and you know, uh, brevity is, is the thing. So just starting at the on the castle sheet on the left and the upper portion, you have the citizens tableau. That is where you're going to be recruiting citizens, soldiers, clergymen, whomever, uh, and shadowy figures into your into the gills for each one. So if you look at the icons, I know it's a little bit harder to see just because it's a little narrower. But if you look at the icons found in the citizens tableau, you will see those similar icons reflected down here in the guild tracks, one for each one, like the clergymen. I think this is the workers, the soldiers, and then the shadow, I guess, people who make power moves and, you know, in the background, all that stuff. And, wear colorful robes, maybe not so colorful, so they're not seeing. I'm getting distracted. So when you, you're gonna have uh, six dice total, two black, green, yellow, red, blue. Blue doesn't do anything in and of itself. Blue actually allows you to add value to red, green, or yellow. You're on the dice and you're able to fill in spots on the guild track based on who you've recruited. So when the game begins, five and six up at the top are automatically recruited. Those are just filled in by default. So if you roll a five and a six, you can fill in one spot for those respective guilds. If you roll a two and a three, you don't have a two and a three, but two and a three do add up to five. So every player gets an opportunity to do something based on what the active player has rolled. And it works pretty much the same way for a solo game as well. So you take the value of each die separately if it applies to you, meaning you have a tableau with at least one of those spots, their foot off from left to right filled in. Then you can fill in the corresponding guild and then earn some of the bonuses from that, uh, which would be if you look at the knight icons and some of them, those uh, correspond to the knights on a wall, which go towards sort of the bottom of the sheet and up on the far right side. And the green, the green ones mean you can move a space on the map, so on and so forth. You have a scoring section in the lower left corner, and then there's monster uh, regions. There's one actually on the castle sheet in the lower right, and then there's three more on the map sheet. And the red die correspond to the monster regions, meaning your red die has to have a value within the range in order to fill in the little pit beneath it, which could be gold. It could be a point. It could be a soldier. It could be uh, moving a space on the map, which is the, the green round rounded corner, uh, like square with rounded corner icons, uh, gold. If you look on the castle sheet on the far left in the center, you'll see the gold charts. Every time you get a gold, 
be it from I don't know if there's any gold in the citizens tableau, but if you get gold from the, the guild track, gold from the map sheet, or gold from the monster regions, you get to fill in gold there. If you fill in gold, you have an opportunity for every six gold you fill in, there's going to be statue cards, which allow you to score different things on either one of your sheets. They're key to really doing well at this game. You're only able to take one and then use it for end game scoring. If you fill in six gold pips, there's four different ones, but you have to fill in six, have an opportunity to take one. If somebody took one that you already wanted and you, you fill in six gold, you can take another one, but it might not be the one you want, but you know, you have to make those choices as you keep playing the game. And if you look at the map sheet at the top, you see the black dots. You can start from four different spots and then work your way around. There's going to be bridges. There's going to be uh, areas called domains that let you change pit values. That might let you recruit someone immediately. Meaning you go over to your citizens tableau and fill in one of the dots uh, for for citizen, which creates more opportunities every time the dice are rolled for you to fill in more things in your guild track. I would definitely be remiss if I failed to mention that one, when you are playing in a multiplayer game, uh, the dice are gonna be passed to uh, the next player clockwise from the current active player. And the end of the game is triggered when one player completes their third guild track, meaning all the pips on their third guild track are fully filled out. That triggers the end of the game and you'd finish the current round so that everybody has an equal number of turns. And then you tally up your victory points and whoever has the most points wins the game. So a lot of bouncing around, but that is a very quick overview of the elements on the sheet. Okay, since my intended to be brief probably was not so brief, uh, sort of rules explanation involved the summer sheets. And I guess it's fitting that I show you the winter sheets and show you how they play. So they play the same rules apply. It's just a different layout. You're going to have different things here on the guild tracks. Uh, the gold is, I think the gold track is actually very similar. Um, yeah, but there's other changes and everything is not exactly, exactly the same on the winter, but the same rules would apply. Uh, I also mentioned the dice. So you're going to have two black dice and a blue, a green, a yellow, and a red and the aforementioned uh, statue cards. You have the ones with the green back and the ones with the purple. I'm honestly not sure how each one, I don't know if one goes to one map better or another. The actual manual just says, Hey, shuffle them up and then deal out six. This one's going to give you one point for every two stars that you get. This one's going to give you two points for every worker in the recruiting area. And there are a total of two, four, six. So you can get, I guess, a total of 12 points on that one, two points per. And this one is going to give you two points for every bridge you cross. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's six bridges, so 12, There's a lot of 12 going on. This one's going to give you three points for every, I guess, uh, clergyman, priest, what have you, that you get in the recruiting area. This one's going to do a similar thing, but two points for every soldier. There's a lot of soldiers there, six. And this one's going to give you three points for every star you gain access to on the night wall here. And the stars don't start till you get here. So you got to make a good way down to got to earn those points. And there's four of them. If you were happy, if you happen to get all four, five by three, 12 points, a lot of 12 points going on. And I hope I'm interpreting these correctly because I did play solo and I interpreted them, I believe, incorrectly to mean.
that kind of be showing what the active player would do, which is very akin to what would happen in a solo game. All right, so I'm gonna roll these dice. Let's see what we got here. We have a three and a four. Boo. Can't really use that. I put the blue up top to sort of remind me that I can use it a little bit differently. All right, so what are my options here? Now, I have a three, a four, and seven. I can't use any of those. So if you can't use any of the black dice uh, reflected here to reflect the number of workers that you actually placed on here, you can pick any, suppose the rules say you can pick any track you want. So I am going to choose the, the shadow track here. And the first space here happens to be a gold. Look at that. And so I got a gold here. So I'll mark off a gold here on the gold track. I'm not sure how well this is going to stand out. Um, hmm. It's a little bit better. Okay. I can't remember. I should have put this under a lamination sheet or one of those plastic sleeves, but I didn't do that. So I will sacrifice two, two precious, precious sheets. All right. So that's just the action for the black dice. And that's it. If you can't put, if you don't have anybody recruited that reflects either the die separately or the sum of them, you can just put a single mark down on any of the guild tracks, be it uh, the shadow, shadow pawnbroker. I'm just adding that. I don't really know, but I just want to say that uh, religious folks, clergymen, what have you, workers, and then the soldier. So now I have, no, I have a decision to make. I have four green which means I can move four spaces on the map or six. If I add the blue die five, I can mark one through five here or three through five here on uh, and, and slay. Yes, slay. I, I could slay. This is one through three and then 10 through 12. This is tough. So I feel like winter is a little bit tougher. Like this one, you have one through five and then eight through 12. So winter is tougher because you're missing like at least on the other one you could have done six right or no yeah in the fall you had one through six and eight through twelve so it gave you a little more leeway so i could use this and use the five four well not here and either one of these spots i could add the two and make it into a seven but i can't do that because you have to go left to right so i have to start off with the leftmost work my way over oh boy um hmm or I can recruit a, a shadow with a three or recruit my second worker under five, adding up the two and the three. If I take a look at what the statue cards are here, a lot of them are about scoring uh, the recruit. So it will behoove me to have uh, both of the workers marked out here because that gives me more more potential points here. And then obviously to do the same thing for the two and 11 and 12. Um, what am I going to do here? I'm, I'm actually going to do that. I am going to use the, the yellow here and the blue for five. And I'm going to mark another, another worker. So if five comes up, I can mark down two pips on this track. All right, so because I filled this in and it was a green rounded square, that also means I get to, to move one space on on the map here. I'll go to this one because this is going to get me to get to a a knight a little bit faster. So I'm going to mark that right there. And that, that was a turn. And if it was solo, I would just cross off one of these trees to show that I had taken my, my first turn. You want to see another turn? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you want to see another turn because this is exciting. All right, turn two. All right, turn two. I got a five and a three. So I don't have any. I don't have anybody recruited for for three. I don't have anyone recruited for eight, but I do have two recruited for five. So I'm gonna mark off two pips because I have both of the pips there filled in, and this one allows me to mark off anywhere on my map. So let's say I mark off that. All right. Now, choices. Can either do three or five 
for a monster, which if I use my red die to do that, I do get a coin. So there's definitely an advantage to that. I can move three or five on the map. Um, I can get a gold there too. I can get a knight here and a gold. Wow, look how spaced out they are in the winter too. Yeah. Or I can recruit four or seven. What am I going to do here? I want to start working towards getting some of these in game points for completing these, uh, these monster areas. It's not what they're called though. They're called monster regions, region, area, area, region, you know, uh, I'm going to actually use my red die and turn that into, I, mean, I can just turn it into a five. It doesn't really make any difference. It has to be one through five to go down here. I'll mark that down, which also gives me one step on my map that happened to be a knight. So I come over here to where the knight's wall is and I fill in space there. Also, because I use my red die or red die with the blue, whichever doesn't, you don't have to use the blue. I don't believe, but as long as you use your red die as your post guild track action, you do get a coin, a gold coin. So I'm gonna take that gold coin and put it right there. Let me do one more turn. All right. So I got a five and a six. Nice. Which is also 11. I don't have anything body recruited for 11 just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the five, obviously. So for two, this green space lets me mark off one space on the map. I don't have to keep marking here. I can start somewhere else. I just keep going right there for whatever reason. And then six is a soldier track, but I only have one there. So I can only mark off one. So now my options are to do a five again with the five red. I could also add the three blue to the five red to make eight. And I might've said something misleading earlier each section of a monster region is its own. So you see the little wall between where it's one through six and eight to 12. If you have eight, you can start filling out that section. You are moving left to right. You're moving left to right in respective sections in the monster region. So I'm sure I made that distinction clear. So I could still use the eight. Something else worth noting are the monster region differences between the summer and the winter maps and the summer map you have access to four monster regions. The fourth monster region will be the one that is located on the castle map. By default, you'd have access to the monster region in the lower left and then work your way to the right. You're not bounded by where you are in terms of the domains that you've unlocked in the upper portion of the map in the summer, where you can just kind of start from where you wish. Whereas on the winter map, you are bounded by which domains you've unlocked this monster region only becomes available once this domain is unlocked. And the same can be said for you have to unlock this one or this one to unlock this monster region. And you have to unlock this one specifically to unlock this monster region. I can move two or five on the map, or I can recruit a four or a seven. Hmm. I'm going to use the map. I'm going to add the three. So I have five spaces. So one, two, three, I got a gold there. So I'll mark that over here. See gold here means gold here Four, five. So I also got to this domain here, which is plus or minus any uh, plus or minus one on the green die on a subsequent turn or if it's a multiplayer game, it will be, um, it's also my third turn. Oops. The multiplayer game, you can only use the domains that you've unlocked on. If you're the active player, all the passive players use the black dice, but then the active player is the one who uses these. But if you are passive and you start, you trigger things that bounce back and forth, you can do that. You just can't take an active player turn. Yeah. That is uh, dice kingdoms of Valeria. Uh, designed by Levi Moat, like I mentioned, and Delhi Magic Games is the publisher. Uh, there should be.
I know one of them was designed by all-around good guy uh, Glenn Flaherty, so I'm sure you check out his game as well. I think that is the Siege of the Kingdoms of Valeria. I, mean, I hope I'm saying it right. It'll all be in the link. It'll it'll definitely all all be there. I'm rambling. Anyway, that is the Dice Kingdoms of Valeria. You know, crunchy recruiting, crunchy map, crunchy gold, crunchy guild, just crunch everywhere. Like crunch, it's got you covered. So that's a little for me. Thank you for watching. Take care, stay safe, and be blessed.